Hello, and thank you for listening to another episode of What Now? Conversations for Life. I'm Pastor Jonathan Barker, along with Pastor Jonathan Bass today. We sure are thankful that you've taken out time to listen again to another podcast. Last week, we was dealing with the subject of fornication and adultery, and we're going to take back off on that here in just a minute and see what we can learn about it today. Brother Jonathan, how was y'all's day yesterday at church? We had a great day, brother. Um, had uh, had some new visitors in, had some returning visitors, um, had a lot of people there, special service, just had a great, great morning. That's good. Yes, sir. That's good. Always love seeing new people come in. So we was, um, if you caught the last episode, we were speaking around about um, the the ghost in the church. <laughs> uh, we had tried to record in a different area, and we wasn't able to. Brother Jonathan, after we got done recording that podcast, we was talking, and Brother Jonathan, tell us the story about the door slamming at y'all's <laughs> church. Yeah, I said I'll take I'll take unheard noises or, or noises on the headphones um, better. I, I told Brother Jonathan that he could uh, he could come up to Shining Light if he wanted to see some really weird stuff because uh, I've had doors slam while I was preaching before, and um, it's an amazing thing. There's all sorts of weird things that happen up there. I've, I've just about got used to it, and um, I'm telling you though. Um, <laughs> I'm just I'm just going to say things happen when you start trying to get serious in your study life and uh, prayer time. I'm telling you, I don't know about you. And I'm, I, I know this is this is on a lighter note, but I can go up to the church, brother, and I can get on the altar and start trying to pray by myself and pray over the church and pray over things that need. And it a sound like all sorts of racket going on behind me. And I've got to the point where I think it's just the devil trying to to disturb me and distract me, so I just keep on going. And uh, I figure one of these days something really going to happen. I'm going to turn around and it'll be a mess. Half the church got bulldozed or something, you know, while I'm up there praying. But uh, but it is strange. I tell you, uh, uh, he is the prince and power of the air. It does some weird stuff. Slam. I'm I'm telling you, I don't. You can't tell me nothing. I won't believe at this point. I'll just put it that way. Especially if you're saying door slam by themselves. What did you think mm. while you was preaching and you looked up I, in that door? It was in the, you could see it, right? Yeah, I, I watched the whole thing because I'm up there at the pulpit and the way the church is laid out, you, if you're in the pulpit, you, you see straight back through the auditorium. At the end of the auditorium, we have a hallway that begins. And at the very end of the hallway is the church office. And I'm up there hammering down, uh, preaching. And I I just notice it out of my you know out of my eye and, and I'm thinking somebody's back there, but the door just kind of slowly turns and then all of a sudden it just pops closed like somebody slammed it. Well, before I knew what nobody in that office. It's a little <laughs> office. If somebody was in there, I would have seen them. And so I'm sitting up there hammering down, not knowing. And then after it closed, I just I, I lost all train of thought. I told I said I'm sorry, y'all. I just saw this door close by itself back. <laughs> I said, we're going to go on, though. And I, it took me about 10 seconds to get my thoughts back together. <laughs> oh, me. We might need to do an uh, episode on funny things that happen in church. Yeah, yeah. Uh, man, I've got so tickled in church before. I remember, and then we'll, we'll jump into this, but with the subject we're dealing with, we need a little comedy before we go into That's it. That's right. Yes, but sir. I remember one Sunday morning, there was a guy that came to our church. His name was R.C. Hawks, and it's Miss Christy Potts' dad. And R.C. always sat on the front row, and he wore them real wide suspenders, you know, not oh, the, yeah. the, the small, the real wide suspenders. And I don't know why I'm showing everybody how wide they was because they can't nobody <laughs> yeah. see what I'm doing with my hands. But anyway, I can see them. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, he was sitting there, and he turned around to get the offering plate behind him. And Miss Tanya was sitting behind him, our piano player, and that suspender come unhooked and took flight. Oh, goodness. And um, it, you could just about hear it whistling <laughs> going through the air, and it popped her right in the mouth. I oh, mean, just wow. centered her mouth, and pow, whenever it hit her. And, man, I lost it. 
I lost. I ended up having to call somebody to come up and sing a song. I was fixing to preach, and I had to get somebody to come up and sing a song. And nobody else but R.C., Tanya, Tanya's husband, Josh, and Miss Myra was still alive then. Miss mm-hmm. Myra saw yeah. it. Nobody else saw it. So everybody thought that I was just mental or something. Somehow, that, yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> but it was hilarious. It was so funny. Well, last week we began talking about really what will probably end up being a three or a four part. I don't know how long it'll go because there's so much that we could talk about on it. And I think it's something that's relevant to talk about. I think it's something worth spending some time on, Yeah. Uh, which any of the topics that we talk about are, but you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. We began talking about fornication, adultery, and temptation. And really the three things tie hand in hand together Um, with temptation comes adultery and fornication. If temptation is not taken care of, then fornication and adultery comes after that. Yeah, and we really, uh, we really dealt with adultery last week. That extramarital activity, if we want to say it that way. So, uh, um, I, I'm sure that you know that subject will come back up. They just all go hand in hand together. Yeah. But let's begin talking some about fornication today. And fornication, um, just just briefly, the dictionary dot com says fornication is voluntary sexual intercourse between two unmarried persons or two persons not married. To each other. So um, we talked about how, you know, we kind of draw that line. Adultery is married people stepping out on their spouse and being unfaithful to them. Fornication is unmarried people, no matter the age, yep. unmarried people having a sexual intercourse. Um, and so here is a verse. Um, and and this is the verse I think that we all run to, First Corinthians six eighteen. Flee fornication. Every sin that man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against himself. So we kind of opened up on adultery. Thou shalt not commit adultery. And we said, you know what? If that was the only verse in the Bible about it, that's enough. Yep. Really, we can come to the New Testament and pull another commandment. Because, you know, a lot yep. of times we talk about commandments and people says, well, there's the Ten Commandments. There's so many more than the Ten. You That's must true. be born again. Yep. That's a commandment. Yes, it is. Flee fornication. Commandment. That's a commandment. Yep. So if that was the only time that we saw it in the Word of God, then that's enough. That's right. That's enough. Which he goes on to say a lot more about it. Um, matter of fact, he says in First Corinthians seven two. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. That's right. Again, yeah. we're not dealing with with uh, homosexuality and transgenders and things like that. We've already dealt with that. Yeah. But right here again, God brings in marriage. And yep. marriage between man and woman, one man and one woman, let every man have his own wife, not yep. wives. That's right. And let yep. every woman have her own husband, singular, yep. not husbands, plural. Yep. So fornication today, I think that I think that this is something that is so predominant today. Mm-hmm. That we really don't even talk about it no more. No. You know, it's like alcohol. You don't hear... Man, I remember as a boy growing up, and I guess this is this is a shame to us as preachers today, but I remember as a boy growing up, man, you'd hear... you go When you went to a youth meeting, you could count on it. Somebody was yeah. going to put hide on the wall, guts mm-hmm. in the floor, and blood in the cracks on fornication. They is going to rip yeah. hide on Absolutely. fornication. Yep. And um, you don't hear preaching on it much anymore. Again, mm-hmm. that's that's the our shame. I might preach on it Sunday morning now. Yeah. But that's <laughs> the our shame. I was sitting here thinking the same thing. <laughs> that's the our shame. Yep. And the Bible states, flee it. That's right. Run from it. Yep. Get away from it. Yeah, I, I remember. I remember growing up, you was talking about in church and, and youth meetings. They'd always they'd hit three. They'd hit three targets every time. They would hit uh, drinking, fornication, 
and rock and roll music. Yeah. That was the three things. You and remember them burnings of the tape? I talked about that yeah, the other night. Yeah, burning the rock uh, um, tapes and yeah. and uh, vinyl records and all oh, that yeah. stuff. And yeah, absolutely. You know, that stuff. And, and, you know, a lot of people look back on that today like it's something ridiculous, but... Uh, I, I mean, you know, uh, there was people getting saved and there was people living right. And, and there was, yes, the, you know, and uh, the truth needed to get out there. But fast forward to 2022, you don't hear much of any of that, just no. like what you said. And, and uh, you know, the thing about it, the Bible says flee fornication. When you said that, when you were quoting that verse a while ago, I thought, what's the perfect example of fleeing fornication? It's Joseph. Absolutely. Turn tail and run. Absolutely. I mean, that's, you know, people might be wondering, well, preacher, how do I flee fornication? You turn and you run. Yep. Just like he did there uh, with Potiphar's wife. She was up to no good. She was trying to get him to lay with her, and he turned and run. And that's what we're to do. When it says flee, that's a strong word. Um, but I wanted to make mention of the tip i mean the word fornication we we mark it as uh if you're looking at the difference between adultery and fornication it has to do with marriage but fornication also um the bible supports the idea of any kind of sexual immorality because anymore you know if you're not careful somebody might say well you know that says between a man and a woman Right. They'll try to twist that into somehow justifying. But listen, any sexual immorality is sin in the That's Bible. Exactly. Period. Right. And I was looking at this, and I find um, I find it amazing doing a word study on forni- the word fornication in the Bible goes back to the Greek word porneia. And half of anybody listening could probably guess how we use that word today. That's right. It's pornography. Is where that's we get the English word pornography from porneia, which goes back to fornication in the Bible. It's sexual immorality. It's uh, it's between two people that aren't married. It's between two men, two women. Uh, uh, it doesn't matter what you're talking about. When you get into all sorts of stuff, it, it you know, um, uh, yeah. Anyways, a bunch of stuff that we probably don't even want to talk about. But if it's sexual immorality. That is fornication, and, yes, and so um, our world is absolutely eat up with it. Everywhere you turn, everywhere you look, everything you hear, the stuff that's that's being pumped into your ears, even commercials on television, and and thankfully I don't watch commercials on television because I don't have television. But but it's sad. You're one of you them. Know, I'm one of them. I don't have television. Now I, I didn't say let's go let's go burn our TVs. I ha- right. <laughs> I don't have I don't have I don't have regular television service. I'm I, the same you way. You know what I'm talking I'm about. The same way. I I rule over what we watch in sure. our house with an iron fist. So it goes to speak. back to temptation. Absolutely, and we'll that's, yep. we'll get into that. But. Yep, it goes back into it. I don't want my kids. I mean, it, it's amazing that you can't even watch cartoons. You know, Saturday morning cartoons. If that's that's right. even a thing anymore. I don't know if that's a thing, but I know that when I when I've been at a motel or somewhere and I'll try to find something for my kids to watch. Uh, well, the content or the, the show I'm watching might be okay, but the commercials certainly aren't. It's ungodly. And so it so promote fornication, adultery, yep. Yep. Um, social drinking. It's yep. pathetic. Yep. And, and most people today, if, uh, let me just say most people, if you're not, if you're not saved and, and sad thing is even a lot of quote, quick Christians, they are constantly being bombarded through the eyes and through the ears. Yep. Something having to do with fornication. Yes, sir. Sexual immorality because it's run amok in our society. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And and it's so sad that it's that way. It's so mm-hmm. sad it that is. it's that way. Um, young people today does not. They don't consider the cost. No. Mm-mm. They um, they are and and I think. A young person's going to do what a young person wants to do. However, as parents, I think we can limit their access yes. to do that. 
Um, we have a rule in our home, and it, it started with Madeline. They can't single date until they're 18. Mm-hmm. And after she was 18, we allowed her to begin, um, you know, dating without a, a quote-unquote chauffeur. And some people criticize me oh, over preacher, that. Oh, preacher, come on. Yeah. You're just being unreasonable. Yeah, I know. It's awful. <laughs> but, and and there does come a time where, and, and you're going to learn this as your kids, you know, get older, there comes that time where you have to give them a little bit, you train yeah. them in the way that they should go. And yes. she still has a curfew. She's 19 years old and in nursing school, but she still lives in my house. She attends a local college. She yeah. lives in my house. She still has a curfew. Um, you know what I'm saying? At 10 o'clock on school night, she's at home. At 11 o'clock on the weekend, she's at home. Yeah. And you say, well, you ought not be that way. Well, God gave her to me to raise and not to you. That's right. But mm-hmm. – they young people does not consider the consequences of what fornication is going to cost them. No. And I've seen so many times, so many times, young ladies and young men both um, go out to the world, live like hell itself, run around with everybody that they want to run around with, and then they get 21, 22, 23 years old, and they want to settle down. They want a good, godly young man or a good, godly young woman to marry that's never been with nobody else, that's a virgin, and they think that that's what they're supposed to have. But why do they think that that's what they're supposed to have when they've lived a life that is nowhere close to that? Mm -hmm. And the Bible even says, Every sin that man doeth this without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. Mm-hmm. He sinneth against his own body. And the young person that is is committing fornication, all they're doing is scarring their mind and scarring their body. Yeah. God, God intended, and, and I know we established this in the last podcast, God intended... Uh, for the 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 sexual activity to be within the realms of marriage, yep. and I believe this in all of my heart. I believe God has one man for a woman and one woman for a man, mm-hmm. yep. and I believe God's intention is for those two people to be the only people that they're ever with. Mm-hmm. That God never intended for me to be with anybody else besides my wife yeah. and for her to be with anybody else besides me. Mm-hmm. God intended that for one man if he was a lady and for one woman if he was a man. Yeah. And whenever we commit fornication, whenever an individual commits fornication, and I know we deal with it as young people a lot, but it's across the realm. I think the reason we deal with it with young people a lot is because we're trying to get them to flee that. Sure. And to get away from it in their minds and their bodies not be scarred from it. Sure. Um, but when we when when we commit fornication, it is that sin against our own body. Mm-hmm. He said everything else is without, but that yep. sin is within. Yep. That's why so many times as well, so many times, and and thank God for forgiveness. By the way, I'm, I'm absolutely. So thankful, you know, there's nothing you can do that is beyond the reach of God's grace and God's mercy. And and I'm so thankful that you know, no matter what kind of life you've had, no matter what situations you've been in, there is forgiveness for that, and you can repent and and move forward sure. with a new life in Christ. The but what I think, like you said, we, we talk about young people and we focus that focus uh, the youth on fleeing fornication is because we know and we've seen it time and time again. When you get your life, you know, at an early age and you get in there and you go out here and you I hate this term and you hear it. And even among people and parents in church, you let them go out here and sow their wild oats. Yeah, they're going to come up. Well, mom and dad, guess what? You reap what you sow. That's exactly right. I mean, that, right. that's it. And, it. and it astounds me at the amount of so-called Christian parents that have that mentality with their children. And they go out here and they, they don't put any restrictions on them. They let them hang out with whoever they want to. They let them wear whatever they want to. Yep. And it's wrong, and you're doing a disjust. I mean, you know, you know, 
mark me and 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 hate me if if you need to, but it's wrong. You're doing a dis a disservice to your children Absolutely. by allowing that. And and you're you as a father, you as a mother are going to be the ones that give an account for that. Absolutely, uh, really the father. And 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 uh, boy, that's a whole nother can of worms because most of the homes nowadays are being run by the mother. Yeah. I can't get into that. And uh, most of but, them, the mother is the godlier person and, in the home. Yes, sir. Cause, and, and I've said that before. The mother has to step up because the yes, dad's sir. not doing his part. Maybe that'll uh, be another man, podcast. That, that, that might be another podcast. To, yeah. We'll go ahead and get everybody hating us. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, but anyway, hey, no, no marvel, right? That's Jesus right. said the world hated him uh, first, and they're going to hate us. So here we go. But anyways... Um, Man, I just I went way off the tracks with that, and I'm trying to pull that back in. But anyways, no, um, it's uh, we see, you know, there is forgiveness. Absolutely, and you can repent and you Absolutely. can go forward, but the scars remain. Absolutely. The scars remain, and and uh, you know, I heard a young man one day tell me uh, honestly, he was down, he was a little discouraged, and here's the reason why he told me that. He said, uh, he said, preacher, I didn't. I didn't go out here. I ain't got the testimony some of these people have. And I said, what are you talking about, man? He said, well, I ain't never drunk. I ain't never smoked. I ain't never had sex before marriage. I never messed up. He said, when I get up and try to testify, all I can say is, thank God for saving me. And I said, well, thank, I said, then thank him for what he saved you from. That's the greatest testimony. I mean, that's testimony. the one. Yes, it's the greatest testimony somebody could have. Our young people are so confused today thinking that they yeah. have to go get drunk. They have to get on drugs. They have to have sex outside of marriage. Yeah. They have to lose their virginity to have a good testimony. Yeah. No, no, the greatest testimony is that you abstained from every bit yes, of that. That absolutely. you've never done any of that. Um, and and it's sad that it's sad that young people feel to that way mm-hmm. so many times. Um, <clears throat> the consequences of fornication. You know, um, I've talked to so many, so many, brother Jonathan, that yeah. that has said, "I wish I'd have never done that. I wish mm-hmm. I'd have never done that. I wish I'd have never done that." And, um, um, you know, and that's, that's going to lead in to learning how to resist the temptation and, and walk away from the temptation. But so many uh, young people's lives have been ruined. So many young ladies, instead of, um, instead of being with their friends on a Friday night, is sitting at home rocking a baby to sleep. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, teen pregnancy is so sad today. Um, and, and, you know, the, 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 a lot of times you hear this, well, they, they make things today there, you know, there's uh, birth control and this and that, and this and that, none of that justifies sin. Right. It right. don't justify, it's still wrong to do that. You know, as I was thinking about this uh, with those comments you just made, God, <laughs> God has given us the key to purity in sexual matters. And I know we talked about it last podcast episode also. It's being married. Absolutely. And staying faithful to one another. I find it amazing. And this is, I'm not a rocket scientist, okay? This is not deep, profound stuff. But the fact of the matter is, is if, if people would get back to one man, one woman. That's exactly right. And stay faithful to one another and yes, love each other. If if that man would love his wife as Christ loved the church, and if that woman would love and and, and submit, I know that's a dirty word, but submit to her husband. Um, and it's see, a scriptural word. It's a scriptural though. word. And, and you know, I've often preached it like this. You know, if, if the man is loving his wife and his family the right way, she's not going to have a problem loving and help. And, and they'll work together. And, and man is the head. And, and they'll have a good family life. I mean, they'll have a good relationship. I told, uh, I told a couple that I was counseling one day, I said, I said, you'll never get past this until you put God as the center of your life. And I, I'll never forget, it's really basic. I remember back when uh, uh, it was at a marriage retreat that you had here at Amazing Grace, Brother Brian Cardwell was preaching at it or speaking at it, and he drew an illustration of a man and a woman and God at the center. And the closer that man and the closer that woman 
get to God, the closer they get to each other. That triangle. That triangle. And that's so true. I know it's true because I've experienced it in my own life, in my own marriage. But um, when you think about fornication, though, if if we would get back to what the Bible says, um, you think about it. If if those rules were followed, there'd be no single moms. That's right. There'd be no divorces caused by fornication or adultery. You think about this. There'd be no sexually transmitted diseases. That's right. You know, um, uh, the world as a whole in general, would be a more wholesome place to live. Absolutely. And yet our society is sitting out here saying, no, the past was wrong. The nuclear family, the Western nuclear family back from the 50s is not the way it's supposed to be. No, no. That's exactly how it should be. Boy, life was a whole lot simpler. Yes, sir. Now, I didn't live there, but when you read history, <laughs> yes, sir. I didn't come to the late seventies. <laughs> but when you read history, life was simpler. Yep. Life was happier. Mm-hmm. I guarantee you that. I, I'm sure that there was still adultery. There was still fornication. There was, sure. I'm sure there was all Absolutely. that. Absolutely. But I, I guarantee you, if you could go back and study STDs and things of that nature back then, it was nowhere close. No, no. To what it, it is today. I thought about this in closing, and, and next week we're going to jump into temptation and and deal with the, the temptation of this, and, and we're really going to, uh, to to nail this more next week. But I thought about I just wrote this down while we was talking. Um, you know, I'm still that old school guy that has the yellow notepad sitting beside of me <laughs> and um, writes on it. But anyway, how do I flee fornication? How do I flee adultery? You know, last week we talked about adultery. This week we talked about fornication. How do I flee these things? Mm -hmm. And I thought, you know, we've quoted this verse so much, but it's just so simple. Make no provision for the flesh. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, it just comes down to that. It's it's to to abstain from the very appearance of evil, to make no provision for it. And um, what what's your thoughts on that, Brother Jonathan? I agree. Um, you've got to, and here's where it starts. A lot of people, it's something I've been struggling with lately, just in my personal devotion time. Um, and this is, this would be a big subject, but I'm trying hard to stop trying so hard sure. for certain things. And, uh, and what I mean by that is I'm trying to do things that, um, God can do, you know, and I want to rely on him and when you said that a while ago, talking about fleeing fornication, uh, my mind went straight to the book of James, draw not a God and he will draw not to you. And a key, I think, uh, I think a key to walking right, doing right, it doesn't matter if we're talking about sexual sin, it doesn't matter if we're talking about cheating, stealing, lying, cussing, anything else. The key is being filled with the Holy Spirit. If you're walking with God, if your walk is right, and you are being controlled sure. by the Spirit of God. You're, you're, <laughs> you're walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit. Yep. And you shall not fulfill and the lust of the, the flesh. flesh. That's right. And so what's the problem nowadays? A lot of people are not walking in the Spirit of God. We're talking about people that... And, and, and without the Spirit of God, you know, I, I think it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyways just in case somebody's listening that don't that didn't grow up in church. You can't have the Spirit of God unless you are saved. Sure, I mean, absolutely. You know, without the, uh, without being born again, you have not the Spirit of God, and you're not going to be able to do anything no. like this. I mean, you're, you're the only thing you can walk in is the flesh. And I think that's the problem with a lot of people. Mm-hmm. They have a form of godliness, and denying the denying power the there. power yes. therein. Yeah. I think there's a lot. Well, it's scriptural. Yeah. Many shall say unto me in that day, Lord, Lord. Mm, yes, sir. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in their name? And I think we've got not just a lot of young people, but I think we have a lot of people in general in our churches that we see that continually falls back into sin yeah. over and over and over and over again. It's like they can never, you know what I'm saying? They just it's like can't, they yeah. can never. Yeah. The problem is this they don't have the Spirit living within them. Yes. And they're not walking in the Spirit because the Spirit's not living within them, so therefore they're they're fulfilling the lust of the flesh. Mm-hmm. They continue to go back to the flesh. 
the day I got saved, the Holy Spirit moved in my life. Yeah. And son, they something different inside of me now. That's right. Yeah. Um, is there still is there still temptation? Absolutely. I'm not yeah. going to say that there's desires, right? Because God changed my desires, but yeah. there is temptation that would lead to desires if I didn't find the way of escape. Yeah. And our society has become so overwhelmed with technology. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of times fornication stems out of pornography. Yes. Young people Absolutely. gets on their phone, they get on their, their device, yep. you know, they get on a computer. Um, you know, we're, gi- we're giving kids 10 years old smartphones today. Mm. Yeah. And and you know you'd say well I would no never filters, yeah no thought I would of never that. hand mm-hmm. them a pornographic magazine to look at you give them way more give than them that something worse than that yeah. when you handed them a phone that's right and and boy we're everybody's loving us right now I know but it's the truth it, yeah. and what we do as parents we fulfill the lust of the flesh for them because we hand that to them yeah these young people I know we we've, we've kind of detoured here but anyway these young people they they their minds are so young yeah and they're they're um uh, exploring yeah and they find themselves seeing things yes sir and then they find themselves it all started with just looking with eve she saw it yes they sir. see something and then they run after it. But I'm afraid yeah. that the reason a lot of people never get victory over their addiction, because that's what it is. Yeah. It's an addiction to something God created that you have turned wrong now. That's right. The reason they never get victory over it is because they're they're not walking in the Spirit mm-hmm. because the Spirit's not living in them. That's right. But that's right. I, uh, I know we kind of... Well, around. it all goes back. It all goes to fornication. It, it all goes to to putting that in their minds. And I had read somewhere not long ago that um, most children, uh, the very first view of sex that they have by the age of eleven, wow, is from pornography. And so, what's happening is these children, the very first idea or view of that is from one of the most oppressive and immoral things that has ever been. And our nation is a walking contradiction because they scream women rights. They scream women power. They scream, um, you know, uh, the oppression of women and they're fine. But yet nobody's doing anything to shut down the porn business. Why? It makes too much money and that's what it's all about. But, and they're trying to get, the kids, because if they can create an addict at 11 and 12 and 13, they'll have them for the rest of their the life. rest of their life. And um, it's just pitiful. And one thing that I ask people, um, I've said this to several guys, um, talking about that thought of handing your 10-year-old a smartphone, handing, you know, um, here's what I've said. And you can think ill of me. Anybody, you know, I hope you don't think ill of me. I'm just being brutally honest. And this is what I have asked guys. I look at them and I say, What would you have done with that when you were 16? It scares me. Yes, sir. It scares me what I would have found on a smartphone if I had been given that at 16. Not 10, not 11. That's right. See, when you're 10 and 11, you're still still innocent. But here's the thing. Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok. And, and, and all these things, they are marketing. You may say, well, my children don't look at that stuff. That's fine. It's called a sponsored ad. It's called an instant message from somebody that's going to target them. It happens all the time. Yes, sir. I was on the phone yesterday with a parent out of our church with a teenager that had been targeted out of that, mm-hmm. had been targeted, got their phone number out of it, and had mm-hmm. been targeted out of it. Yeah, and it, um, what do we sad. do? Flee, flee. That's don't, exactly right. Don't use That's it. the way. Put blocks on it. Yep. Do, no do your duty prov- as a parent. <laughs> make no provision for the flesh. That's it. That's what we have to do. Walk in the spirit. I want to say this to you in closing. You know what? You may have found yourself 
in the midst of what we've talked about the past few weeks. I want to echo what Brother Bass said earlier. There is forgiveness for that. There is forgiveness for it. And and, and you don't have to continue that lifestyle. Um, it, it You'll never know true joy until you know the joy of the Lord. It's a peace that yeah. passeth all understanding. It's Amen. joy unspeakable and full of glory. True happiness is not in adultery. True happiness is not in fornication. True happiness is not in drugs and alcohol and and and. Yeah. On and on we get true happiness is found in the Lord and yeah. in walking in fellowship with the Lord. And um, if you found yourself in those areas, I promise you there's a deliverance from it. God can help you with it. And um, we're going to uh, jump into temptation next week. How, how, do, how do I overcome temptation? And I'm really looking forward to that. Yeah. Um, I think it's going to be a great podcast. Well, you got any closing thoughts, Brother Jonathan? Just keep a listening. Make sure you share the episodes out there. We want everybody, everybody to to get them. Be a blessing. Um, we want the truth to get out there. Sure. So, um, share the episode. Share it right off of your Apple Podcast or whatever you're listening on. Subscribe to us. Uh, that way you don't miss nothing. And just get the word out. Write to us. We'd love yeah. to hear from you. Send us a private message. You can find both of our churches on Facebook, Shine and Light Baptist Church, Brother Jonathan's Church, Amazing Grace Baptist Church, Mount Airy is the name of our um, um, Facebook account. Is y'all just mm-hmm. Shine and Light Baptist Church? It's Shine and Light Baptist Church, Mount Airy. Yeah. And then ours is Amazing Grace Baptist Church, Mount Airy. Send us a message. Um, our email is in the notes. Um, here on the podcast so you can look at that also thank you for tuning in today and for listening to another what now conversations for life